Hey folks, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about the parchment paper liners for the Firebox lineup. Later in the video, I'll give you all the dimensions you need not only for the box pot, but also for the scout lid, the bread pan, and also the cake pan. I'll also talk about options for the Ultra Cook kits. So let's get on it. Some general housekeeping. This video is going to be all chaptered, so you can just bounce around. I will start off with some tips on folding, cutting the parchment paper, and then doing a folding demo. I'll show you all the dimensions towards the end of the video, in inches and in millimeters. So before we jump in, for the firebox fry pans and plates, you can find a round and fluted parchment paper on Amazon to accommodate the round shape. So, there are quite a few out there that are made for air fryers, but I'll leave that up to you folks to go check it out. Unfortunately, I've not found a solution yet for the billy pots, but if anyone wanted to share one, please post it in the comments. So here are a few tips on making these liners. The first thing you'll want to do is try and stay away from the thinner parchment paper. They're not all created equal, as you'll find out. Now, this one that I picked up from Costco seems to hold up pretty well. It's pretty thick. Which brings me to the next thing, which is temperature. This particular parchment paper, and many that you'll find out there, will only go up to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, or 218 degrees Celsius. Now, with thinner pans, like the box pot, as opposed to the five-way cast iron, Thinner pans tend to come up to temp much quicker. So just be mindful of your starting temperature. You do not want to go past that 425 degrees or you'll burn your parchment paper like I did in my last cook. So parchment paper is very slick to work with. Very, very slick. So you want to make sure when cutting or pressing down your seams, you need to make sure that you have your fingers also touching the surface you're working on so the parchment paper doesn't shift on you. Now for the most part, a sheet of rolled parchment paper will have two sides that are straight or straight enough so you can technically reference them when measuring everything. I like to use the two edges, these two finished edges, to get at least one of these sides straight. So parchment can be a bit stubborn, so make sure and use something really flat and smooth to press down the seams or the edges. It makes it a lot easier to cut later. Now to get the best cut of parchment, you really need a good sharp knife. So I like using my fillet knife since I can get it really close to the cutting surface with it slightly tilted downwards. It's much easier to control if you can also have the handle hang off an edge, just like this. And just like that, you have a very, very straight edge, or at least three straight edges. So you've successfully cut your first parchment sheet. The first thing you want to do is make sure and look at the dimensions that I've posted on this video. The first fold you want to make on this parchment paper is going to be that first center fold. So basically what you would do is fold the sheet in half so you can actually mark out the first center line. Again, I'm making sure that I line everything up and my fingers are touching the parchment and also the surface. That way I can get 
the parchment nice and stable and it doesn't shift. Okay. Perfect. So now all the measurements are going to be based off of this first center line fold. So the next thing you want to do is measure from that center line that you created or that center seam that you created to either side. In this case, the dimensions for this particular liner is going to be two inches from center. So I have my trusty ruler and I'll go ahead and mark off two inches. So I'm using a Sharpie for this. You can use any type of marking uh, tool that you want to use, pen or pencil, but I found that the Sharpie does really well at uh, marking parchment paper. There. So I've made two paint markings, one right here, and the other one here. So now we've got a mark here, which is two inches from center, two inches from center, and the same here, two markings, and uh, two inches from center and two inches from center. So this is where we're gonna, th this is where now we're gonna start our folds because we're gonna fold along two inches from the center and another two inches from the center. So that's what we'll do right now. Perfect. And we'll do the other side. Again, using the edge. Get that straight seam. All right, so now we've got our folds. And now we've got three seams. We've got the center, and now we get the two edges. This center area right here is going to be actually measured to fit uh, the pan that you're putting it in. So now what we'll do, we'll fold this one side. And we'll make another fold, another basic fold in half. Just like that. Go ahead and pull the seam. What I'll do is going to go ahead and open that up. We'll deal with that later. And now we'll fold this other side that we already did, and then do the same thing as folding it in half. All right. So with this right here, this uh, this first fold from center, we're going to fold that over. We're going to leave this other one flat, and then we're going to be making our corners, which is just folding it into that last seam that you created, just like that. All right, so now we've got these edges folded. We'll go ahead and fold it in just like that. And we'll let that stand. Now we're gonna take this other end, fold it over and do the same thing. Now what you'll notice is that your corner folds are gonna, are gonna fold over the other corner, which is perfectly fine. It locks everything into place. So it works out just right. Again, this is something that you can probably do before you head out. If you've got a lazy, rainy weekend, you can make a few of them and just tuck them in your bag. So if you've got to this point where you think you've got Noah's Ark, you've done it right. 
So I'll go ahead and just make sure and press this down. So one thing you want to do is to make sure and fold this on either end. That way you can get a nice flat bottom corner. And you'll see what you'll see what I'm talking about when I do this. Okay. All right. So that's done. Now this particular setup is the exact dimensions for the box pot with the baking stone. So all I have to do here is just open it up, unfold the corners, unfold the edges, do the crimping of the corners like I typically do. Now that's the bottom edge I was telling you about. Once we do that, we've got a perfect box, perfect liner for the box pot with the baking stone. Box pot with the baking stone. Slide that in, perfect fit. Has a little bit of a gap also, so that it doesn't interfere with the lid. But that is the liner for the box pot with the stone. Hope you like it.